I accept the nomination. I, Akim Olufemi Zajabi Amila. God bless you all. Many thanks for tuning into House Ticket, your regular legislative education on the activities of the House of Representatives, Federal Republic of Nigeria. I am Dihelia Mamza, your guide. The House will convene from the Christmas and New Year break on Tuesday, 18th January 2022. In this package of the program, therefore, we have reports on what transpired during plenary proceedings. House Ticket also spoke to a cross-section of lawmakers, revealing what the year 2022 will be like and what Nigerians should expect from the 9th Assembly, amongst other happenings around the House of Representatives. Stay tuned and we'll be right back with the full details shortly. If we set our minds right, embrace each other in love and brotherhood, we will come through these troubling times. We will survive, we will recover, and then we will thrive. One nation under God, free, peaceful, and prosperous. Thanks for staying tuned. On the reconvening of lawmakers after the recess on Tuesday, 18th January 2022, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabi Amila, declared the recess over with a welcome address to his colleagues, where he welcomed the lawmakers back to the House of Representatives and also expressed his delight to see them refreshed, energized and ready to do the people's business. The speaker, while addressing the lawmakers, said the Ninth Assembly has been an unusually productive parliament despite the limitations imposed on them by the global pandemic. We have taken legislative action to address long-standing challenges of governance and economics in our country. We have passed landmark legislation to fix our oil and gas industry, reform the police, and reorganize the corporate administration system in our country. Representative Femi Bajabi Amila said meaningful legislation that impact all areas of the nation's national life have been considered and passed. Some of these bills are the Police Service Commission Act, Repeal and Reenactment Bill, the Electric Power Sector Reform Act Amendment Bill, the Deep Offshore and Inland Basin Production Sharing Contracts Act Amendment Bill, Amongst many others, just before we adjourned in 2021, we passed a, state of, a slate of bills to reform the aviation sector and clean up our airports so these critical national assets can be properly administered to the best expectations of the Nigerian people. The speaker also reminded his colleagues of what can be achieved when dedicated public servants work with purpose and precision in the public interest. And I want us to be inspired in this last year of our present term in office to work harder, work faster, and achieve more than we ever did in the past. Too often, the legislators' work and the benefits that derive therefrom are not uniquely recognized and acknowledged. Active measures are required to change that. And it is our responsibility to make sure that the people we serve have sufficient information to judge us on the facts. Therefore, it must be a priority for us this year to document our efforts, double our efforts and our success, and communicate the same to our constituents across the nation so that we can be judged individually and collectively by our evident accomplishments. Honorable colleagues, we have a lot still left to do in a very brief time. Principal among these uh, priorities is the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. First, let me express my profound gratitude to all of you for your work to pass this most critical legislation. 
Now I'm talking about the Electoral Act Amendment. I commend you all for the work that you put in. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that bill did not receive presidential assent, and it is unlikely that it, it will in its current form. Now we have to choose between sticking to our guns regarding the provision to mandate direct primary elections for political parties, or you walk in that provision to save the rest of the bill. On a final note, the speaker said that 2022 is the final year. They have to conclude work on their legislative agenda and fulfill the obligations of their contracts with Nigerians. Let us approach this last stretch with a forthright focus and earnestness that comes with knowing what we are in the face to make good history. The entire purpose of the legislative agenda is to direct our legislative resources and efforts in a coordinated effort to ensure the well-being of the individual in a life of safety and freedom. That is a high ambition, but it is well worth the effort. Honorable colleagues, once more, I welcome you all back to the House of Representatives. I look forward to a fruitful year of considerable achievements in the joint task of nation building. And I thank you all most sincerely for your presence here this morning. God bless you. That was the Speaker's charge to his colleague as the Ninth House resumed legislative business for the year 2022. House ticket also caught up with a cross-section uh, of lawmakers uh, as they returned from, uh, to the chambers of, uh, after this recess. Of, uh, they spoke on what Nigerians yeah, should expect from the Ninth Assembly during the 2022 legislative and, uh, year, among other so important the issues. The way to go is that we've um, collected the uh, views of Nigerians from the holidays. We inter interacted with our constituents and then uh, whatever we're going to... Um, this course, it has to do what the majority of Nigerians want. Definitely we have a legislative agenda and that agenda will be followed to the latter. And I can assure you it will be a success just like 2021. So the Nigerians, they should expect more that we're going to put in our best, especially preparing the grant for the 2023 general election because that is just the priority in our country now. And also the issue of insurgency that will bring it to an end, total uh, eradication of insurgency and banditry in our country. So all those things we are working behind towards. We will take a break here, but when House Ticket returns, we shall bring you details of bills and motions considered by the House during the first week of plenary for the year 2022. Do sit back and watch. Thursday, the 19th of January 2022, Speaker Femi Bajabia Mila read a communication from the President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, requesting the House to consider and pass the best possible versions of three different bills, namely the Proceeds of Crime Bill, the Whistleblower Bill, and the Witness Protection Bill. The President said that it is in line with the need to ensure the government's zero tolerance for corruption to be sustained. On Wednesday, the 19th of January 2022, the House adopted Clause 84, Subsection 2 of the Electoral Amendment Bill, which allows political parties the choice to conduct direct primaries while electing candidates for future elections. Sub two. The decision was read by the House the during the Committee of the Whole while considering clause by clause sections that had informed the President's decline to assent to the bill earlier. You will recall that the president, while withholding assent to the bill, insisted that political parties should freely determine the mode of electing candidates of their choice for elections. There was, however, a mild drama by the lawmakers at plenary during the deliberations on the way forward for the contentious bill. The speaker, while citing the original provisions of the extant law of the Electoral Act 2010, preempted lawmakers who plan to expunge indirect primaries as a mode of determining primaries from the Electoral Act and called for a voice vote, which was carried by majority in the House. Those in favor of say aye. Those against say nay. Ayes have it. Also speaking at the press briefing after the sitting on the Electoral Amendment Bill, spokesman of the House, Representative Benjamin Kalu, further briefed the press on the Electoral Amendment Bill. The House rule in Order 12 
Route 20, 21, 22, 23. Says that when a bill is returned back to the House of Representatives that by the President, because he withdrew his arson, we have the option of resigning our former decision and working on only the specific clause. So today, gentlemen of the press and fellow Nigerians, we worked on what Mr. President proposed and we accepted that it will be good for our democracy at the moment to allow the electoral act be passed, the electoral bill, uh, electoral act amendment bill to be passed into law uh, by adjusting our former position and allowing the direct and indirect primaries to go through. Still on the electoral act amendment bill, the minority leader of the House, Representative Ndudi Elumelu, also expressed satisfaction on the final decision of the House to include the indirect primaries, thereby leaving political parties to choose any among the two. What was passed initially, I, if you recall, I, I led my, my colleagues on a walkout. And I'm happy that we're coming back to what I worked out for, or myself and my colleague worked out for, because we claimed it that time. It was illegal, constitutionally illegal, to decide for political parties. Give the allow them to use their discretion to where the state this demands that direct should be applied, they should apply it. Where the state demands that it should be indirect, it should be applied. But don't force them on one particular system. Moving on to motions on the matters of urgent public importance, saw the debate on the motion moved by Representative Idem Unime on the need to curb the activities of illegal oil refineries in the Niger Delta region. In leading the debate, Representative Idem noticed that the activities of illegal oil refineries have contributed to the suit being noticed in River State, which he explained is highly toxic to the health of those in the region. Concerned that the Niger Delta region of the country has over the years been plagued by the activities of illegal oil refineries at the detriment of the lives of residents and the economy of the country. These activities have compounded the age-long problems of environmental pollution and degradation caused by the swimming and exploration activities of the multinational multinational oil companies operating in Niger Delta, contributing to the dramatic changes in the weather pattern being experienced in the region. Representative Onofiok Luk proposed an amendment to get the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation to grant licenses and support the establishment of modular refineries to help with the refining of crude oil. My amendment is that we should insert a prayer in that motion to get the NNPC, Department of Petroleum Resources, and then Ministry of Petroleum, to give licensing for modular refineries, sir, and then to equally encourage from NNPC to encourage the establishment of modular refineries. If NNPC can vote 600 and something billion naira for road construction, there is nothing wrong for NNPC to allocate funding, Mr. Speaker, to support the establishment of modular refinery. It should, it should not be the, the Chief Whip of the House reminded Representative Luke that the Petroleum Industry Act limits the NNPC to do what the amendment is seeking. Based on the Petroleum Industry Act that this House has passed, DPR is now defunct. In the course of moving his amendment, he repaired to DPR. DPR is now a non-existent body. While NNPC is now a limited liability company, it has no power to do, it has no power to do that. There is form. Representative is Toby Okechuku pointed out the need for facilitation of licensing properly structured modular refineries. There is form which is things has established. There is also the substantial issue of trying to do justice to the Federation. My understanding of what Luke mentioned was the need for government to facilitate modular refineries. 
because modular refineries that we expose as people to suit is of is, is, is subjecting our people to perdition. Anything that encourages that. And there are licenses for modular refineries. We should activate those licenses. Refineries was important, and that's why... The Speaker, while supporting the amendment from Representative but Luke, called for its restructure so that it can stand on legality. The amendment was re-amendment to call on the upstream and midstream regulatory agencies to grant the needed licenses. Introduce partisanship on a very important matter. Uh, this was important. The issue of illegal refineries was important, and that's why he was brought in to bring the motion. But as a seasoned legislator, you may be spoiling your case now by saying somebody has come in to fulfill. Uh, it might be spoiling your case. But the important thing is to allow this amendment, which I agree with. Honorable Luke's amendment to, to go through because the argument for me now is a question of form over substance. That's the argument Honorable uh, the Chief Whip is making. Form over substance. The substance of Honorable Luke's amendment is let them grant licenses for modular refineries so that the issue of illegal uh, operations will cease. I want to add... Representative please, Ibrahim Isiaka proposed an amendment subject to the earlier amendment moved by Representative Luke to review the already existing licenses for modular refineries since some of the licenses are not being utilized before granting new licenses to deserving modular refineries. The motion was voted on and adopted as amended. Those against me say nay. Eyes have it. That the audit of the House Still on motions register. moved in the week under review. Lawmaker Toby Okichuku moved the motion on the need to investigate the circumstances surrounding the report of alleged missing firearms and ammunition from the Nigerian police. While leading the debate, Representative Toby stated that the 2019 report of the Office of the Auditor General of the Federation alleged the disappearance of several AK-47 rifles, pistols, and other assorted rifles across different police formations. He expressed worry at the poor compliance within the internal control system of the police force that has led to the prevailing state of unaccountability of dangerous weapons in possession of unknown elements. On this basis, that I move a motion on the need to investigate the alleged missing firearms and ammunition of the Nigerian police. The House notes the 2019 report of the Office of the Auditor General of the Federation on alleged disappearance of about 178, 459 different arms and ammunition of the Nigerian police force in 2019. The House further notes that the audit of the Arms Movement Register, monthly returns of arms and ammunition, and ammunition register at the armory section reveals that a total number of lost firearms as of December 2018 stood at 178, 459 pieces. Representative Okechuku called on the House Committee on Public Accounts to conduct an audit and report back to the House within four weeks for further legislative action. He also called on the Inspector General of Police to take due action to apprehend those behind the incidents. He further called on the House Committee on Police to ensure compliance. Moving on to bills, 15 bills were passed for first reading which comprises of amendments and establishment bills. For second reading, Eight bills scaled, among which includes a bill for an act to repeal the Investment and Securities Act 2007 and enact the Investment and Securities Bill to establish Securities and Exchange Commission as the apex regulatory authority of the Nigerian capital market to ensure capital formation, the protection of market to ensure capital formation, the protection of investors, maintain fair, efficient and transparent market, and reduction of systematic risk and for related matters.
Another bill that scared second reading during the week was a bill for an act to establish the National Youth Service Corps Trust Fund to provide a sustainable source of funds for the National Youth Service Corps, skill acquisitions, training and retraining of personnel of the National Youth Service Corps, development of camps and NYC formations and facilities therein, and for related matters sponsored by Representative Akin Folaring Mayowa. The bill was voted on and approved and referred to the House Committee on Youth Development. Those in support, please say. Aye. Those against, please say they. Aye, sir. For third reading, the House leader, Representative Al Hassan Adodogwa, moved a bill for an act to repeal the Electoral Act No. 6 2010 and enact the Electoral Bill 2021 to regulate the conduct of elections in the federal state and area councils in the Federal Capital Territory and for related matters. The bill was voted on and approved. Glad to have you back. And the program is still house tickets. As earlier mentioned at the introduction of the program, we had an interview with lawmaker Mohammed Tahir Mongono, who is the chief whip of the House of Representatives, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Representative Mangono, during the interview in his office, said the House and the National Assembly will vigorously strive to bring legislations that will be in favor with the wishes and aspirations for Nigerians. There are a series of bills that is awaiting the consideration or the attention of the House of Representatives. And these bills are bills that seek to better the lives of Nigerians, to bring succor to the lives of Nigerians in view of the pandemic and all its attendant and concomitant problem of uh, price hike, inflation, and what have you. Representative Tyre Mongono, while speaking on the 2023 general elections, assured that the House will ensure that the legislative duties of the members will not suffer for their political ambitions and that it will not be distracted from its primary responsibility of making laws for the peace, order, and good governance of the country. We have to discharge our primary responsibility of bringing peace, order, and good governance to the doorsteps of Nigeria. So, election or no election is going to is not going to distract us from performing our primary responsibility. Representative Mongono represents Marte Mongono Ganze Federal Constituency of Borno State in the northeast of Nigeria. He did not end the interview without speaking on insecurity in his state and region, commending the efforts of the governor of Borno State while highlighting some of his plans and achievements for his people. In view of the avalanche of the problem of insecurity across the nooks and crannies of the country, the House is determined to nip it in the butt, because the primary responsibility of government is the protection of lives and property. That is the primacy of governance. And the House, being a representative of the people, will not sleep on its oars, will work round the clock to make sure that the issue of insecurity that is now threatening even the corporate existence of this country is ameliorated and Nigerians will go to sleep with their two eyes plus one by way of robust budgetary provisions to the security sector, the overhaul of the security infrastructure, and also by way of proper oversight on security-related institutions to make sure that Nigerians get value for the billions of dollars that is being channeled to all these uh, security agencies by way of a proper oversight of these security agencies. And then...
As we call it a day, don't forget to keep your comments, observations and questions coming in through our social media platforms showing on your screen. We'll do our best to get our representatives address them accordingly. Until I come your way again, bye for now.